you don't do it anyway, you go down and you turn. So you don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody stops. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Well, it wasn't very well. It was. No. Yeah, when the little thing I paid for. We used to do it. But that green makes a big difference. Fourth day, you know, third day of a holiday. Like, why put it there? I was surprised. Yeah. So did the the town candidates also came right? Yeah. Yep. And yep. so there should have been a better purple. All those meetings in order. All rise with the pledge of allegiance. All right, boys. That's the meeting to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any adjustments to the agenda? There are no. Seeing none. Oh, public comment. Is there any public comment tonight from anyone? Only one in the room is moving, so. Well, uh, you can go first. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> Seeing none. Seeing none. Okay. Approval of minutes, please. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the school board meeting September 12th, September 26th, 2023, barring any errors or any errors or omissions. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Got a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. Motion for the payroll one, Kevin Gregory. I move to direct the superintendent of schools to authorize payment by the town treasurer to each party listed herein, the sum set against each name contained in school payroll warrant PI 24-6-2 in the amount of $486.30, PI-24-6-3 in the amount of $1,249.15, and PI 24-6-D dash two in the amount of $104.77 on September 14, 2023. PI 24-7 in the amount of $131,228.99 and PI 24-7D in the amount of $71,425.33 on September 28, 2023 and PI 24-8 in the amount of $131,957.79 and PR 24-8D in the amount of $71,079.27 on October 12, 2023. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Five vote. Table warrant. Chairman. Motion to direct the superintendent of schools to authorize payment by the town treasurer to each party listed here listed herein. The sum set against each name contained in the school payable warrant SA 24-4 student accounts in the amount of $2,986.55. AP 24-9 in the amount of $32,456.05 and AP 24-10 in the amount of $141,097.11 on September 28, 2023 and AP 2352 in the amount of $980.77 physical year 23. SA 24-5 student accounts in the amount of 
$363.08 and AP24-11, the amount of $94,959.28 on October 12th, 2023. There's a local area right there. They had 363 at 636. Sorry. Take record 636. Thank you. Oh, eight. Second. Second. Any discussion? Here's a quick one. Yeah. I see we're still seeing some FY23s. Are those going to end soon? Yeah, um, this one particularly for 980.77 um, was due to errors um, in calculations of the MEA dues in early 22-23 school year. An incorrect amount of payroll deductions were taken from many employees. Rhonda Casey found the error and has since corrected it. Affected employees were notified. And yes, there still may be a few additional expenses with F five twenty three. Any other questions? See none. All in favor? Five one. Thank you. Motion for the junior class. <clears throat> Motion to see if the board will approve Haley Aldridge as the junior class school board. Student representative. Second. Any discussion? I do. Would somebody like to fill us in a little bit on on Haley? Uh, yes, please, Beth. Um, so Haley is a junior this year. Um, she is a very active within her class. Uh, you go to a junior class fundraiser and Haley's there and she's usually the one giving directions. Uh, she will not be intimidated to speak up, to tell you guys about all of the stuff going on within the school and within the classes. Uh, she'll be very knowledgeable. I think she's going to be a superb addition to the board. Thank you. Maybe she can just Slide real again. She might. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> <idea. laughs> we, yeah, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Five on. Adoption of policy. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt uh, following revised policies. Uh, ED, EFD, school lunch charging policy, uh, IJNDB, student computer internet use, internet safety, IJNDB-R, uh, student computer internet use rules, IJNDB-E, student computer internet use and acknowledgement forms. Thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion? I just have a quick question. Okay. I think I asked it everything. I think it's still the same. What if people can't afford this? Is this is this something offered so they don't go without? Yes, all of our students receive a free meal. Okay. All of our students. Yeah. So the only thing that um, they might have to pay for is if they wanted something offered a la carte. And that, of course, is by their own choice. Yeah. And I'd remind everybody, I think we say this every time, that these are led by MSMA. So, you know, other than making a, a slight um, change, which the policy committee would have had um, opportunity to do, then these have not changed since you saw them. Do we know how long the state is going to fund the lunches? Or? I haven't heard that. I had, in some of this other stuff that I was going to talk about, I was going to tell you that the um, the... Last year, remember, you had to have a communal um, meal program, a congregate meal program. They're actually are changing some of that because there's more um, people participating in some virtual learning and some like snow days or power days, things like that. So that's a new thing that um, is still coming up. And what happens is if we have like a loss of power day and we do a virtual day, um, something like that, then we can apply for a waiver after the fact. For last time, we kind of got caught up in the fact that we had to have meals already at home. Remember those delicious meals Mia put together? Well, those had to already be home, and so they're changing some of that guideline. Any other questions? 
Seeing none, all in favor? I vote. Discussion of resolutions for the fall conference notice. Yeah, well, I uh, Kevin, if you want to take over, well, I just a little bit. I sit in on a meeting uh, with Aroostook and Piscataqua County with the state going through these. Uh, the uh, the first part you see are uh, the, all deletions, and I, I'm of the mind the less the less you have in some of these policies, the better off uh, we are, the less restrictions, and it's more it gives us more uh, freedom as a school board. Uh, some of the changes. Uh, that I, I thought were good was uh, teach, some of the teacher preparation programs. That's on, uh, well, it doesn't give a page number, but and professional development. Uh, I know one of them stressed uh, that with the problems we had recently with COVID and stuff, that uh, a lot of behavioral issues and things like that, the way students were affected, and they were going to try to do some uh, either in school training or state training uh, with new teachers, but in school with uh, already teachers. So they could look at that and see some of the problems. Uh, so that that's under um, 2V3A, uh, professional development. Yes. So you're recommending that, that we agree with that? Yes. I mean, you asked if I had any questions, I, but no, yeah, these are the ones I, that stuck out to me. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, 2B3A and plus uh, the uh, 2B3D 3D, was yeah. the teacher preparation, sure. uh, which I thought were were. Mm -hmm. Made made good made good sense. It right. it talks about uh, identification of students who have behavioral health substance use mental you know uh, that all makes perfectly good sense. Right. right. Um, if you uh, you know on partisan school board members, uh, there was quite a bit of discussion on that. Uh, in in Millinock, we uh, we don't run as Republicans or Democrats. I don't. Uh, we always run. The, we do what's in the best interest of the students. Uh, but there is some discussion about. It. I mean, I uh, I have a party affiliation. I I don't leave that at the door. But I mean, still, it's not the best for the students. Is what's in my interest, right? And I think that's reflected a lot by the party I belong to. Uh, but I thought that that was all right. That was good. And, and that's what the intent of this language. That's way I. That's way I read it. What's in the best interest of the students in the district? Right. Right. Uh, I did have a question uh, on. Uh, Parental guidance, engagement, and education of their children. And it was pretty much uh, the last sentence. It says the M MSBA also believes the parental guardian opportunities for involvement in the education of their children should not inhibit the education of other children. Uh, as a parent or a group of parents who are interested in things going on in the school, it's going to affect everybody's children. So I, I didn't know how that would really work. You know, if I get up and I say, well, I don't think this is right in the school, right. well, then I'm inhibiting your right as a parent. Right. And if you get up and say, well, I do think it's right, you're inhibiting my right as a parent. So I thought it was kind of a... I'm kind of guessing that that sentence is more broadly thinking, like if a behavior of myself going in as a parent is like disruptive to the learning of the students, yeah. that that might be more... That's how I interpret it, yeah, I, I should say. I think there's several ways you can. And that's one of the discussions we had. Was there were several ways it to is. interpret it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I that's one I had a question on. Yeah. Uh, Do you think anything resolved? As, as you not were really. Saying? Not really. It just kind of went round and round and, until everybody got tired of listening to it. And, <laughs> so um, when you go to vote, will there be more conversation? I, I would. I would. I hope the district. He only went had two districts. So yeah, there was just, uh, just uh, the uh, Tampa yeah. So I'm assuming there's going to be other districts that will pick up on this too. So maybe through that conversation, you'll understand better the nuances well, of what that's intended. To yes, I, I think. I hope I do. Uh, but I. I, I know tonight I'm going to need some. I think this is the night you give me some direction on how we're going to vote as vote as a board because that's how we vote. Right. Right. Uh, and then uh, state funding, uh, state funding to support students' mental and health behavior. Uh, that's the very uh, that that. I mean, they they were all pretty. They were all good, but I mean, the ones I mentioned, I commented on were the ones that there was a problem with. Uh, I think my concern with the last one is that it indicates that it will be um, m money will be 
sub, you know, supplemented through the EPS formula so that you will, district will have the money to do these things. And I would like wonder about that. And I know that these professionals are very expensive professionals. So, I mean, if we're adding another layer of money, I guess my thought would be, where's it coming from? You know, well, and, uh, how to, dedicated is the state to actually providing that? And, and to, to go back on another one too, on a uh, 2B1G, it's create technical education opportunities. They deleted a, uh, they deleted a section that says a resolution calls for the state to fund CTE using an equitable and transparent formula and to increase the funding for this program important to our schools and our economy. Uh, they're, they're stressing up above how important it is. And they talk about funding for transportation and equipment, uh, but they did delete that section and that. You know. And I don't know if you remember, but a number of years ago, they put out an initiative to start um, CTE programs in middle school at grade six. Mm -hmm. And there was not funding that went with that. So some yeah. districts were able to financially pick up and roll with that and others yeah. not. And so I, I hear you on that thinking yeah. that um, yeah. if they put this in and there's no supported funds to go with it, it can be stressful for a yeah. system. And I, I just like those words, equitable and transparent. And they deleted those, but... They say, I mean, there's nothing I would hang my flag on, but they're just the changes that are, that are there. Thank you well, for that. Well, some of the stuff that has changed is EPS. They have EPS one right now. They don't get their funding right from the Senate schools. Right. So they used to get it right from us. Right. That doesn't happen anymore. Right. I had a question about the um, school choice. Yep. And they oppose a mandated inter-district choice. And I would think we agreed to that. We still have superintendent swaps if we have to do that. If you just give people a choice, I think that would uh, hurt a lot of the rural schools for sure. Right, right. I've got, I've got a couple. <clears throat> 4.25. Which are talking about school board remote participation. They they want to strike that all together. I think that's completely wrong. I think that sure should be the option for the school if they want to do remote access to board meetings. Uh, can, can you say where you are? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm on uh, four point two five. I guess it must have been under two. Oh, I've seen Two B. This makes me yeah, would meet them all. Actually, one of them they took out. Yeah, the leader. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I agree. Yeah. I I think this. I think in this day and age, if we have the capacity to put it out there for people to watch wherever they are, whether or not they're traveling or if they're home or they can't access our our building, you know, specifically, I, I agree with you. Well, I, yeah, I, I think it needs to be our choice, not yeah, not right. main yeah. school. I mean, we've done it before. Where we've had to ask a board member who specifically was traveling and told yeah. them that mm -hmm. they could not be part of the executive center. Right. You know, or you may be sick and be laid up for a while, but right. you can still participate. Right. You know, from the hospital bed. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, the other one is on under the career under C two B one G. The career opportunities, uh, where they're taking they're, they're taking that completely out of there. All all they're talking now is transportation and equipment. They're not talking about helping with any. Yeah, I, and I agree on that. I think that I think that's wrong. I think that they should still be, you know. And you can all remember when it wasn't that long ago that they were pushing us hard. They pushed hard last year about middle school having right. CTE and stuff. Well, if they want that, they need to fund it. This, this is getting to be a game now where we'll fund what we want to fund. Well, that's not what it's all yeah, about. We can't, we can't go back to the unfunded mandate. No. no. Uh, there Again, 2B3A, uh, the, the ones that are taking out professional status and, and development. Okay, but nowhere in here, in the 2B3A, it talks about doing something to help with instruction and doing something to help teachers 
but it doesn't talk about any money. Right? Again, they want us to pick up the tab on that. You know, I, I, I think I think COVID not only had an influence on stat on <clears throat> kids, I think it had a, a, a graph influence on of teachers themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what some of this is about, but they need to they need to be putting some money in there to fund that. Yeah, that was two B three A. Your last yeah. sentence there, Tom, um, um, says it to um, require sustained devotion of time, effort, and financial resources to the continuing education of instructional staff. Yeah. And like you said, again, not supported. Yeah. Uh -huh. And again, these are just resolutions these for the SBA. It's not the state. The state has to agree. Right. The legislature has right. to agree. Right. But I mean, right. we need to, you know, we need Push to make forward. action and what we want. You'll mm -hmm. see people down there that will get up and fight. Oh, they will. Yeah. They have to do it. You know, they choose the bigger district. The, um, yeah, they see this. The school choice thing, I, I'm, I'm still up in the air on that whole thing. Why, uh, why we're taking some of that out? But uh, I, I didn't know that. Apparently, there are communities that you run by your party. You run by a Republican or a Democrat. I've never, I've never heard of that. I, I never heard of that. A lot, of, a lot of people have been just questioned. You know, what, what do you, you know? Why is this even an issue? Yeah, we don't run them. I don't understand that either. You know, I, uh, um, and <clears throat> the last one is the state funding to support students' mental and behavioral health. I'm 100% behind that, but is there is there going to be money? For it? Yes. You know, I, I know they say the you know within the EPS formula, you know, even minimal receivers. Yeah, right. We all know how that works. And it says the legislature needs to dedicate additional funding. Yes. So, Phil, there's a long fight ahead to get all of us supported. Yeah. Thank you. Um, others? Shelly, you did say at one of our last meetings they were looking at that rural, um, like the 0. 0.84 that we have, if given everyone 1% of what this, you know, one full share. Yeah. So, is it, that's through the legislature or through the? Or through the formula. So yeah, so right now we get eighty four percent of right. what we should be getting. Right, right. And where right. Portland gets one point three two percent, one hundred thirty two percent. Right. right. I attended a meeting with the DOE. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it last time with Paul Gravel. Yeah, and I mean they they really just don't understand, and I I I predict they're going to keep on going round and round, um, probably right up until they give us our numbers in December. They really are. Paula is trying to really get people to understand how one thing moves everything else. And, and that certainly is one piece. And, and until they get the legislators to understand how EPS that's right. works, that's right. there's not going to be any changes. They're still going to go by, if you're a Portland, you're going to get, like say 1.335, I think theirs is, um, you know, you get up into... Uh, Thornton Academy, uh, Scarborough. Look at this, one point five eight. How's that fair? Right. I mean, and the ratios, <laughs> because they have the school populations in the rural right. district. They don't. Go. They don't and, lose anything for not having that. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyway, Kevin, there you go. <laughs> okay. Was that helpful? Well, I think I think it was to me uh, the state funding part. I know that's something I can stress when we talk about yeah. it. Uh, and I, if it's not state funded, I think it might be a wise move on my part not to vote for it if they're not going to commit to a funding, anything that requires state funding. Uh, do, yeah. do you guys agree on that? Yes. Y years ago, we used to get stuck with what they called on funded mandate, yeah. Yeah. which is where they made us. Yeah, I understand. And didn't. You see, that could be a possibility in some of these. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Have enough information? I think I do. All righty. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you, all of you. Well, uh, I think it's going to be an audience. This is now.
Grayson is gone to a field yeah, hockey cool, cool. game and he's still fox Oh, Why is she running down the field? Right. This one. Okay. Skip. Yeah, skip, yeah, skip it. One. Skip it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, the stepping on mileage reimbursement rates. All right. So at um, our last meeting, um, Tom mentioned that uh, there's been some movement in, in various areas on mileage rate. So I can't find mine, but Pamela did some checking with folks. You have it? Okay. So Pamela did some checking with folks. And so you can see, okay, the state rate is 0. 0.46, um, but you can see for yourself um, what they are. And there's quite a, quite a range actually from 44 cents all the way to 75 cents. Um, the This is put in policy. So the policy committee, We'll certainly take into consideration anything that you folks want to add for uh, comments or thoughts, or if you want more information, do you want it more diverse? This group of people is pretty much like, you know, from right around our area. And is this, is this what you were thinking? That, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you look at Lincoln is 65, Dad is 65.5. Region three is 75. I think we're doing the dis dis justice to our our people uh, at 47. And I would like to see us act on it now. Yeah, I don't no, wait a year. No, I, wait till next budget. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think our staff should, when they go to travel to improve themselves, to go to workshops, I don't think they should be penalized by not being paid equitable with it. Other people. One thing that was kind of interesting out of this is that we found that there's a couple of school systems that don't pay mileage for workshops if the school doesn't initiate the workshop. So, say Shelly wanted to attend something on basket weaving, um, they don't support it unless you say, Well, Shelly, I really think our program could benefit from you attending that. So, there is some of that out there too. We, we had that problem here years ago. Kevin, you, you probably remember <clears throat> when we used to have teachers that did that. Not so much with mileage, I remember. It was more of classes, paying for classes uh, to get the pilot's license or to get uh, basket weaving or to get knitting or to get... Right. Uh, yeah. And we we changed that. So yeah, that you had to get... You have to get permission. For you had to get permission. Yeah. You know, and even if we yeah, had to yeah. do something here with with... With the mileage reimbursement, you know, it has to be okay, okay travel. You that's know, just, correct. You know, that's correct. But I, I'm, that's my feeling. I don't know how anybody else feels on it. I just, I think, you know, we always talk here, you know, that that we 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 want to be equitable, and we should be equitable. We're we're a division of the town. Okay, we should we should be equitable to what their employees are getting. If they do it for their employees, then we should be doing it. The same what did they get? Sixty-five point five. And the federal rate is fifty eight five. Yep. It I would don't be... think I don't think whatever we do, we can do this year. I think we're going to have to hold where we're at and wait till we have the budget up next year. It would be a bit of a challenge um, for us to make a change, especially. That we're talking twenty cents a mile to go, you know, to go up into the sixties. I can remember when I first came on the board, we were below the state rate, and just to get to the state rate was, you know, I think it was like five to eight cents, something like that. And I was kind of amazed that we're above state rate. Where where do you get where are you getting the state rate? We're not above state rate. State rate forty six. Where did you get that? Google, Google, and uh, book. You. It went up because it was forty four. Because just going up to forty six. Yeah. I guess if you want me to um, check this out, we, we can look to see like what some like pre approved um, expenses might add up to. Kind of mm -hmm. do some math. And come back with a little bit of that. Like people who um, Nick Collins goes to AD meetings, 
um, Jolene's going to Portland a couple of times. Like we can kind of check out some of the ones that we know and give you what the difference would be. Um, if that would help. And then, of course, our next meeting with the policy committee is at the end of October, and we could um, discuss it there further. Well, at the very latest, we'd get an answer by uh, November. Right. We'd have a, a firm idea how much it would cost, yeah. and we'd a definite yay or nay. We'd take a vote. Yeah. Because the 44 cents was there for a long time, and gas was under $2 a gallon. Right. Now it's $4 it's a gallon. It's crazy. It is. I, I don't so it's uh, Yeah. I think. What do you think about that, Tom? And I'd like to get it addressed as quick as we can. You know, well, you know my stance. I think we ought to do it tonight. I think we ought to we ought to make a move. If we don't go to 65, what if we went to 50? I think we ought to make some kind of effort. Now, I mean, we have other things that come before us that we don't have budgeted. We don't we know that the money's not there, but but the money is there. We find it. That's just my feelings. I just want everybody to know how I how I feel on it. But I'm willing to go with it. We're bored and whatever we decide, and that's what the way we'll go. And you you think, Shelly, you can give us uh, Dr. Lane, you can give us a, a pretty good figure of what it's gonna cost. I can I can really look through particularly everything that we have already requested and look through like the second half of the year on what happened last year to see where people are. Some of them are fairly predictable. Um, so I could give you a good estimate. Okay. Because you don't shake the budget, right? What does the budget to travel total amount exactly. times 0. 0.20, 1.20? That'll give you a total. Well, that's, right? that's true. That yeah, that'd be a much slicker that's way, to do, it. way to do it. <laughs> Good thinking. Yep. So current amount budgeted. Times whatever if you went to the sixty five, probably one point three or whatever it is. Why well, don't I do that and send you guys an email and um that would at least allow it to be we could still address it at our meeting and because I'm like Tom, I, I really don't want to see it drag on. Yeah. But if we can get a a, a good ballpark estimate yeah. by the next meeting and and make it up and on the agenda yeah. that we're going to have a vote. Yeah. I, I would. I, yeah, I didn't think of it the way you said. It's much easier. No, it's a lot easier. <laughs> it's half a dozen lines and do some math. So yeah, we can handle that. I mean, and then and then you're going to be off a little bit because some of it's already happened. Correct. Okay, but yeah, but we could give you an idea anyway. Just not making a retro, just it's happening. No, no, happens. no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we're already we're through, already into through, it. Uh, we're halfway through the a quarter right. through it. We're a quarter through the house. Oh, no, we're almost half. Half is until January, July, right? Yeah. 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 Dude, we all set with that. I understand a student representative is out on the field trying to zoom in. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> is she really? No. <laughs> She's running with her laptop. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Did I give the okay. so that so Grace does have her report in for you. Okay. Administrative report. Look at this, Louie. You were first when you were here first. Anyway, yeah. I promise you it's going to come through. Mr. <laughs> DeFrey. So last week, we uh, finally completed the second elevator modernization project, which has uh, been a two month plus ongoing endeavor here. Um, so both elevators are done, completely renovated, all new control pumps and wiring and pretty much everything that's uh, electrical that it takes to make the elevator run. The, the cabs and everything stay the same, but we're all retrofitted with new buttons and there's more key switches on these new ones that uh, <laughs> have, to have a special key cabinet just to just to keep track of all of what all these things do. Um, it's got some cool features where if somebody gets trapped in it, they just push a button and it automatically calls Otis and Otis will get a hold of uh, 
proper people to help get somebody out. Um, fire suppression, fire alarm uh, system was had to be put in, bring it up to code. That was done, and fortunately, we were still in doing the install of our fire alarm system, so kind of worked out good. I think we saved a little bit there, having the guys already on site uh, doing that. So we now have two elevators with up to code fire protection. Um, so one elevator is back in service, the one that goes to the second floor. The uh, other elevator was not able to be put back into service because it was not inspectable in the spring when we had our elevators inspected. That elevator had been shut down because it had totally been kaput. Yeah. So even though it is brand new, just like the other one, that technicality of it didn't get a spring inspection does not allow it to be put back into service until the state uh, inspector comes and does his thing. So a bit of an unfortunate technicality, but it is what it is. Um, we are waiting now just on the state inspector to come. It's about a month or so out. Um, so as soon as he comes, does his thing, then hopefully we can get the second one fired up and back in service. That's slowly will be done under the SRA. All of that was done, yeah, under ESSER funds. Yeah, great, uh, great project. And we jumped on it at the right time because it got really expensive shortly thereafter. So yeah, we were fortunate. We are fortunate to get locked in when we did. Um, we also saw the completion of the heating heating project that we started in school ended last year. That's been ongoing all summer. And last week, uh, actually last Wednesday, Corey's finished the last valve and we we're doing the programming. So that gives us complete digital control, essentially from everywhere in the world. <laughs> that I might be, I can log in and control the heat, control the buildings, control the... Uh, the pumps and the motors and and, uh, and get all the alarms for, for things. So it allows us to know what's going on and to address problems really before they happen in a lot of cases. I'm really not sure why he did this because I don't think he's thought of it yet, but he now will never truly be on vacation. No. I'm no. thinking we don't pick him up. We, he's on vacation. Where I go. We don't have IA, we have LD, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm your IA. Yeah. Uh, that was also done by the yes, That was also uh, actually no. We funded that project a year ago on through the because we have over budgeted our fuel bid came in lower oh, yeah. than expected, and that year we had electricity savings. Yes. So we funded that through those two things. Um, so that was another big project, to, and these have been big projects that everything outside of what the companies do all the additional wiring, phone line wiring, and conduit runs, and the computer cabling, and all of that, I had to pick up the slack and do. Um, so it's been a busy few months with those projects. Um, certainly, I'll breathe a little bit easier now that those are, are done. Um, Josh and I were able to get the backboards installed at Grant Street last week. That's a big improvement over there. Um, looks a lot better. Been years in coming. Yes, it's definitely. Nice um, we are also we partnered with Architad and they did a fundraiser to install two more backboards on the court, um, and as well as they were raising money for some swings. And I think they're pretty close to, if not, have already reached their their goal. Um, so I've got to get in touch with Shelley to see where we stand with that. So we should be having two more lower backboards put on on the sides of the court. Um, for the younger kids, um, unfortunately, what typically happens with that is the big kids then <laughs> destroy them because that's where they go slam dunk them. But uh, so yeah, that will be coming probably in the spring at this point. Um, and if you notice, we we did get the bleachers torn yeah. down on the football field, the old set of bleachers that were a, a danger. Um, and I think the day before the game, got everything hauled out of the first game, got everything hauled out there, and. Fortunately, the league donated uh, their big set of bleachers off their field over there. So that was a tremendous help to us. Um, you know, thousands of dollars worth of bleachers there for the visiting side. Uh, and I have seen them full. So that's been a, been a good, good addition with railings and, you know, bleachers that are safe and up to code. So that was a, a bit of a win for us to, to get that and not have to put anything back there ourselves. So those are the big things. The, the fire alarm, like I said, that's still in progress. That's um, pretty much done, but we've had some glitches marrying some of the old equipment and the new equipment. Um, but 
we've added a voice evacuation system to the new uh, panel. So in the office, they can either push a button and say if it were, uh, it, it, it voice activates and directs people what to do in different scenarios. Or you can get on an intercom and put it out to the gym, the auditorium, uh, getting instruction what to do, not only in a fire, but another type of emergency as well. So that brings our gathering spaces up to code as well. And uh, not too sad to see the completion of another big project. <laughs> so it's been a lot going on the last few months for sure. Any questions? So we put voice activation throughout the whole school. No, voice just... activation by code is required for the auditorium. Any see right. over 400. Over 400 and... now. Yeah. yeah. So it was the auditorium and the okay. gym. Our hope or goal would be the, one of the ESSER projects that we have, and we haven't started because of the ESSER rewrite and all of that, is a new intercom system for Stearns. Our intercom system is like 35 years old, and it is yeah. not trustworthy. Um, so if we did put a new intercom system in, I did talk with the, these people about tying that in so we would have it all over the entire building, which would Good. be the ideal scenario. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you, Lou. Uh, we'll leave. One thing. Nothing, I'm just, it's been a long day. It's been a busy day. <laughs> so, um, October child count is ready to be finalized by myself, and then I'll give that to uh, Dr. Lane. She will finalize that. That is our total number as of October 1st. How many special ed students we have and their percentages and their disabilities, and that is used to help with funding. Um, we've done, thanks to Louie, getting the elevators fixed. Um, Jen Jondro moved her entire classroom to the lower level. Um, so that she could educate all of her students and she has now then moved back upstairs again. So that was her volunteering to do that once again. And um, let's see, something. Oh, we now have new toileting protocol at Granite Street. Um, I went over last, last week for three days and met with um, ed techs talk to them, you know, who was comfortable, who wasn't, what the procedures are. We have a document document now for each student so they can um, do, you know, record the information. So if anything ever happens, we have a lot for that. So, and meetings are happening right along. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Ms. Mary? Um, our sixth grant is all up to date and submitted and ready to go. Um, we worked very hard on that information team, and we have identified that our math and reading programs and other line standards and there's lots of gaps and the teachers have been doing a great job of finding resources on their own to supplement some of those gaps. We also found that 52% of our students have been absent 17 more days last year and 80% of our students are absent between 10 and 16 days. So absence is another big area that we need to address and it's a national trend that we're seeing as well. We've spent some time with Kate Greeley from the Maine Math and Science Alliance, and she's coming back in October and December, and that's being paid by the sixth grade. And that's going to pretty much take up the money that we have, um, and we should be looking to see if we get more money and if we're still in tier three school in January. And what you have there is the results from the main through the year assessment that was done in the spring. And the first page is from grade three. And the school was, their median score was 1509 and the state score was 1505. So it was actually a little bit above what the state expected in that. And for third grade reading, the school was at 1501 and the state was at 1504. We um, just got these results at the end of last week and was able to watch a webinar together Friday that kind of helped us understand what these numbers meant. 
um, fourth grade, the school is 1503 and the state is 1502 for math and for reading it was 1506 and that's what the state was as well. And then grade five, the math, our school is 1497 and the region and state is 1500. And for reading, the school was 1514 and the state was 1509. So it's pretty amazing how well the students did on this first test that was quite challenging. Um, I mean, I sat by some of the students that took it last year to my old district and um, people were feeling a little unsettled by it because it was a lot different from the NWAs that the students had been taking the last few years. But this really showed that the, the students came and, and gave their best effort and did really well. I got one. And this this red and light green and blue is this actually our students? Yes. Yes. So for the first one, we had two students that were well below. Yes. And so we had two students, and I like they did it by student numbers, not by um, percentages, because yeah. they didn't have a small rural school like ours. Yeah, there was two well below, there was two that was below, 17 that was at, and two that was above for the grade three math. So that's what those three, those graphs mean. And we could also look at individual students and identify which ones. And um, most of them were children who had a disability and had accommodations on the task. But Fair. still, they were. Um, when we looked at the special ed, and I don't think I've shared this with you, only 75% of our special ed students were in the yellow. So that's still really, really good. What test did you say they, this was based on? It's Maine through the year assessment. It's the new Maine state assessment that they started last spring. It's different than what the old MEAs were then. It's similar to like the old MEAs and the Smarter Balance test that they used to take, yes. Okay. And we're in the process of doing this, the fall ones right now. We'll start tomorrow mm -hmm. at Granite and you've already started this year. Yes. I noticed the numbers don't match up with our enrollment. Is there some kid that didn't take the test or well that was from last she, yeah. that was from last spring. October oh from last spring, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so this we just barely got because they were doing a lot of um determining what they were putting at state standards where this was brand new test for the state. And the test that we're taking now we're supposed to be able to get the results within 24 to 48 hours. So by the next school board meeting we could have the results and this fall will be able to share. And, and it will help us determine about this access level of time. And it's a real asset to our teaching staff to know the results much quicker because then they can that can help drive instruction. Where now we're looking at like old data. Is it is it good? Does it have some level of contribution? Sure. But if current teachers are testing and get results, they can drive that right into whatever lanes kids need for each of these topics. So there's some real value in having that data yeah, um, much, much sooner. It used to sure. take a long time to get your MEAs back and things. It and did. It, it wasn't, did. it really made it hard to help. Mm -hmm. Generate right. instruction. It kind of was used more as a high stakes, like school yeah. identification, yeah. where now it's supposed to be more towards um, oh, driving good. education yeah. um, so that the students have a productive year. And the timing's much better. You give the test in the fall, teachers can plot their path based yeah. on the class that they have. Mm -hmm. What was interesting, too, and this is just the overall for each grade level, but you can go into each student. And you can look at which questions they got wrong and which questions they got right. And it breaks it down into different categories for the math and the reading. And it will also tell you whether it's a, what they consider an easy, a medium, or a hard question. So you can do a lot of analysis with it. I wanted to mention, too, um, you mentioned about like just the enrollment numbers like looking different. But also, we should add that at Stearns, I can't say so at Granite, but at Stearns, we only tested about 60% of the kids last year. And so Nick and Beth actually put together a plan so that our students, you know, are tested. Like the whole point is for a state test is to have kids tested. So any student who had a legitimate reason not to be tested, any family that had a legitimate reason not to want their children tested, 
they just had to make an appointment with our admin team in the office and come in and have that discussion. So as of right now, we've only got two students, two students who are not taking um, the Stearns level test. So that's an incredible, incredible change from last year, which honestly should give us a better sense on what Stearns looks like as a school system. With granted, I'm talking about driving instruction and not that they won't do that here at, at Stearns, but here, like it will give us a better grip on how our students are doing with the more rigorous curriculum that they will then leave um, for whatever path they're going to take. So it's a, I think it's great that they're doing it in the fall. It's amazing how this correlates with adults because math, there's very few adults that aren't basic skills deficient in math. Yeah. Um, especially the older people who have been out of it for a long, long time. Right. Um, and you see that. I see that. You that do, it does yeah. happen a lot. Reading, almost everyone is uh, at grade, you know, high school graduate level, but right. math, some of them are at fourth or fifth grade. Right. And it's, uh, it's amazing, really. So I would think that everybody sitting here would be pleased if the through the year will be successful as administrating, as a, a, to administer it and for us to use the results and not change again. So as Miss Mary just said, we had Smarter Balance and then we've had NWAs and we've had MEAs. Like they need to like find a platform, keep with it, so that we can, you know, move forward with some of the choices that will make us a school system too. And we do have two students that ran it that are not. You did, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. For, for different reasons. Did, we have, any, reasons. did we have any issues with the technology holding people back? Um, yeah, that the, used to be a big problem. The technology has been a struggle. I was at the Penqua superintendent's meeting last week, and some other school systems had already got their testing underway, and it was horrible, the stories that they were talking about. Um, and then you call for assistance, and it was, well, put your laptop back to, like, its original status. And they're like, no, we're not putting our laptop <laughs> back. So then they went and, like, configured 32 computers, and they put this lab of computers, you know, throughout the school system. So they run across a lot of technical issues. And we and both schools have run across some technical issues, which, you know, they've been able to overcome. But I have to say, we're working on building up students to desiring to do their best. And we're working on helping teachers understand that this tool helps you as you move forward to have the platform put out by the, the testing system be wonky, for lack of a better word, is really discouraging to people who are ready to go and do their best. Sorry, I took a No. Well, this, this is a brand new test, right? Yeah. So we're, lo we're, and we're comparing it to other now in Maine. Have we, where did we adopt this from? Is this a, a regional test that they've been using? Is this a national, or is this a new one? Across the board. What they did was they took the NWA, which was a national test that, that a lot of schools have been doing for a long yeah. time, but then they um, changed it to match Maine standards. So this is unique just to Maine, but it's tied into the NWEs. Okay. But it's very different from the NWEs. Okay. Okay, thank you. Kind of testing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to see that we're finally doing something with us. So cool. I think that you know that got thrown on the back burner and just left. So and thank you very much for that. And isn't it getting really, that moving ahead to, to what we should be? Isn't it encouraging actually to see these charts too yeah. from spring? Yeah. Like I mean, like when did you really see that and get a chance to look at it? And that's so, the yeah, I, I thought that was really nice. I was mm -hmm. glad that she provided yeah. that. Yeah. We kind of wonder what data was being done because we never we never saw anything. Great. Right. Yeah. So, well, we can thank do you. move forward. Yep. Yeah. One other quick thing. The uh, Granite Street is that you put out or was put out by the this classics and the teachers. Yeah. That was excellent. Okay. I enjoyed that very much. Well that's our plan to do that every month. It was it was nice. A lot in it. Yep. Yep. It was very nice. Very interesting. Thank you. Ms. So I had some three-year testing also on my agenda, and I just, I think Miss Mary covered it very well, explaining what's going on and why that test, and probably why you're hearing that term, three-year testing, for, you know, just recently or for the first time, maybe. Um, 
but we have started here. So again, with um, Ms. Mary, I hope to be able to bring you some of our test results at the next board meeting. Um, and we'll take a look at that. So another topic I wanted to touch base on is curriculum. We have been doing a great deal of work with curriculum on our early release days, our workshop day on Friday. Heather Garza has done some trainings. She also, I'm not sure if all of you know this, but she also has a doctorate and curriculum is her passion. So she has set up a timeline to go throughout the year and work with teachers individually in groups, depending on subjects and also vertically. So connecting from grade to grade. We're very excited about all of the work that they're doing so far and um, they'll do a lot during the course of the year. So I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on and let the public know. Mentor training. Again, Tether Garza decided that she has always loved being a mentor. So she went to one of the train the trainer um, conferences this summer, and she is running a mentor training program with our teachers. So our more veteran teachers can work with her, her and be trained to be a mentor to new teachers. So either you know, first year teachers or teachers who are new to this district. And she ran her first with anyone that was interested. And I believe she said she had 16 okay. teachers show up. So okay. that's, yeah. awesome. that's awesome. That just shows the kind of staff that we have. They're always willing to jump in and to help. Veterans Day celebration. So we were looking at um, November 7th as the as the day for having Veterans Day celebration. And that's the day for voting. So the Veterans Day celebration will be on November 9th. That's Thursday. And it will be held in the morning. We'll have more details soon. We've been working on that. And Terry Given is helping to organize the whole thing again. Um, the National Honor Society students will be helping to prepare and serve breakfast for the veterans. The student council helps provide funds and um, ingredients and organization of all of that. So the band and chorus will also be participating during that event. Many, many, many of our students become involved in this. And I think at the heart of it, that's what's most important. The students meet the veterans. They sit down over breakfast with them. They speak to them. Um, Granite Street comes over and joins us. Um, it, it's always been a really good event. It helps with um, reaching out to our community and having our students see a real life group. Something I wanted to highlight this month was our outdoor education program, which you all heard about from the middle school perspective, and we now do that and have extended it into high school. Anna Loom is running that program, and she is doing a fantastic job. So she is working in conjunction with the year program through the library, through the town library. And they are learning some bike maintenance. They're, they're learning um, trail maintenance. But in the outdoor ed piece of it, so far, she says that they have talked about risks and hazard analysis um, and paddle sports. So they have gone uh, kayaking and paddle boarding at Millinock Extreme and Jerry Pond. So I hope that you guys received the picture that I sent of a class that was out paddle boarding around Jerry Pond. I went up and joined them. They were wonderful. And I was really shocked to hear that a couple of them, this was only the second time paddle boarding with outdoor ed. And a couple of them told me I'd never been on a paddle board before. And having gone up to watch them, you would never have known. They were paddling all over the place and talking and laughing and joking. And 
it was great. They were really enjoying themselves. So they're hoping to go mountain biking, weather depending, for the next few weeks. Then they'll go on to snowshoeing. Um, they'll be looking at trails and what trail conditions should look like. There'll be um, navigation and orienteering for map reading. They will be learning how to fire start and do outdoor cooking. Shelter building. They also learn all year long about leave no trace. Um, let's see, I seem to be saying um a lot, I apologize. It has been a busy day. Um, yeah, see, there it goes again. <laughs> so they hope to have the opportunity to go whitewater rafting through the Northern Maine Outdoor Ed cohort. And it's not certain about learning about going to the whitewater and paddling. And so that's something that they're looking at as a possibility. So the trails, bikes, and gear so far, they have been using groups and stakeholders learning the types of trails and the differences. They're learning parts of trails and the vocabulary involved. Um, they are creating a profile of the local trails. So, let me see. They're doing the three pillars of sustainable trails. Trail specs, um, measurements, Students are measuring slope, grade, and spacing of grade. Spacing of grade reversal or the trails behind the high school. So they're also looking at trail tools and trail safety and plan for the end of the year. They will move to hands-on trail building and maintenance activities bike maintenance skills. So they're actually going to, we hope to bring some of the gear library staff here and have the students actually working on bike maintenance right here at school. Um, winter trail maintenance, trail design, and then they'll be doing some group and small group projects. It is there, it's amazing. It's amazing, it was great to go up there and watch the kids, they were having an awesome time. And um, Mrs. Bloom was out there. I don't think any of them could keep up with Mrs. Bloom. Uh, I don't, I'm sure all of you know she's, she's um, into a lot of outdoor activities, including marathons and running. And so she was all over the place with them, and they were all doing a great job. Would a lot of this stuff be done during the enrichment period that they have? Like if, if they got the bike part over here to work on them? It could be, but this is also, this is one of the new electives that we put in. So they have class time scheduled in the day where they do this. Okay. So the last the last block of the day, the last period of the day, they they went up to Jerry Pond and went paddleboarding. I think that's great. Yeah. So they're getting a credit right. for it as an elective. What, what, class, what, is it, what, what class is worth, junior, senior, or all? I think the class that I watched was mostly juniors and seniors. Okay. Because I could, I'm hearing you talk, you could see ways that could be tied into education. So without them even knowing it. Mm -hmm. all, that's that's what right. kind of makes it a dream of fun. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we live in Maine. We live in Northern Maine. So a lot of our students are outdoor kids. And if that is the best way for them to learn, then I'm really pleased that we can offer this opportunity with people that are certified and they understand what they're doing and they bring in outside groups that are also the same. So it's done safely and it's done effectively. Yeah. Sounds good. I think it takes the academic and brings some relevance to it. Yes. Right. Any questions? Thank you very much. All right. Well, here you are. Welcome. Dr. Lane. Yeah, right. Um, so just I'll highlight a few things here. Um, I think we mentioned before that we're working on um, tightening things up in our 
system of hold, secure, lock down, and um, evacuate and shelter will eventually just become like fire drill, something that's just um, second nature. Um, Matt Sears kind of leading the charge with his um, set of skills. And he and I went to um, East Millinocket PD last week and had a meeting with them to um, kind of continue to move forward our efforts for coordination. So that should we ever need somebody um, here on site, though we kind of learned about how quickly that will happen or or where we how we get that initiated. Um, our auditors from HRH were here in the building this Wednesday and Thursday. Um, it's a long process, so you won't have any, you know, real definitive information from that for a while. Um, this is the typical way. They come here on site, do a lot of testing, um, make lists of information that they want, and then go back. And um, we're not their only clients, so sometimes it takes a lot, quite a while for us to um, hear how that is all going. Um, I went to a Region 3 meeting um, last week. Uh, the culinary students uh, cooked us an, an absolutely delicious meal. It was interesting to see what programs they're um, adding and taking away and where our kids fall in um, interest levels. Um, Maine is piloting a, um, a program to prevent homelessness. And I was talking with Katie D, who manages this for us, and they're going to give us already have $750 to help prevent homelessness. So if anybody here has any idea how $750 can help Katie in our schools prevent homelessness with that, you let us know because she and I are both puzzled on how we will do that. Um, is it a good idea? Is it a good initiative? Sure, it's federal money. They're funneling it through. Um, it just seems like it um, would be a challenge for us to make an impact. But we have it. Katie's got it, and we'll use it wisely, I'm sure. Um, in the Pinquist meeting I had last week, um, the commission, commissioner and deputy commissioner were both there, and they were talking about um, student transfers. And the fact that they, if you remember right, if you've been you know, listening for a few years, it, the pendulum swings where everybody who puts in a transfer gets a transfer. And then it swings back where everybody who puts in a, a transfer is denied. Well, we're in a time when they're getting denied and superintendents are agreeing with each other on it. But now the pendulum is going like a third wing over and they're going to the State Board of Education and saying, you know, pleading their case, telling their details, and a lot of them are overwhelmingly getting overturned. So that's creating, it's like, it's like we're in the third column here where the school board, state school board is overturning something that the local superintendents have agreed to. So they were, we, they were just kind of highlighting the fact that this pendulum has been going back and forth for a long time, but now we have this new element. So they're recommending that if we have somebody that we've denied and we've talked with, you know, we're in agreement with the other superintendent that we actually physically leave our buildings and go to this meeting um, in Augusta. So I'm just giving you a heads up. We don't have that situation, um, but it just was new information. And I've done this for quite a while. And I can't say that I know hardly anybody that's ever gone to the state school board. Um, but I thought that was interesting information to share. Sounds like it's more overreach by the state. Okay. <laughs> um, the next piece, uh, um, the EPS program, I think we've already talked about that a little bit too, um, that there needs to be a lot of education to our for our legislators before they can make any um, substantial change that really will affect um, education. And then I also wanted to add these couple of pieces. Um, we have a, um, Sandy Booker today is at a wellness training. Um, so we're excited to get that program going when she comes back with um, some ideas. And then next week, we have three people going out for a um, diabetic training so that more people on staff have an understanding of, uh, you know, not only the numbers, but what carbs are and what we do for kids who have highs and have lows and how we assess. Um, so we've got three people going for that. And considering we are rural, it is nice to have people on staff. And if we're going to go outdoors, like the ladies have suggested with outdoor ed, it's better that more people have some understanding of what some of those onsets look like. A um, couple other things. Louie is thrilled to hear that the main school um, facilities inventory project is being supported by the DOE. 
The DOE has received $670,000, 100% uh, federally funded in order to do individual building inventories. And then they will give us a profile of our buildings. There are a hundred data points and they have already started the process. And I've talked, I've talked to Louie twice, like, okay, well, uh, we'll hold them off for a little bit while well, at least, you know, everybody is here in the building so that we can do this. Um, but that's coming, I'm not sure to what avail because I'm not sure like how that's going to help us. If you have a Louie in your system, you probably know those hundred data points and we know where we're at. I will say I've worked in systems that probably will struggle to come up with answers for those hundred data points. But how that will it be advantage to us as Stearns and Granite, I'm not sure because we have a Louie. I just thought you might want to know that that's out there. Um, we have a new um, student, a 17 year old girl um, coming to through Jump the World. She is joining us on October 16th. So next week she'll be here through December 7th. And that program is called Jumpstart. So she gets to take one of her semesters and join us from Guatemala here in Millinocket, experience what happens here in October, November, and part of December. So we're really <laughs> pleased to be able to invite her to that. It's a fire, yeah. fire a coat. <laughs> yeah, from Guatemala, that's, that's right, that's right. Um, I already told you about the, um, no, I guess I didn't say this. Did I mention to you guys the last time that the ETB cards that were related to the pandemic, the P-EBT cards, were ending. Did I mention that last time? No. Okay, so that's money that are given to school-aged children who um, the state by qualifications had said that their families need some um, financial support for food. So when the pandemic hit, all of those kids were identified for extra funding. So the end of that funding is has just gone by, actually it's um, October 15th. So it's just, just, or just coming up, I guess. So the reason to mention it is that um, the money went on the ETB cards and then some letters went out and a lot of the population didn't know this was happening. And now this means that some of these families who have come to rely on some of these funds, it's going away because pandemic money in general is going away. So this was one that caught people by surprise and um, I got this information at the superintendent's meeting as well, because parents were coming in with, you know, like, what is this? What's happening? And it doesn't have anything to do with, with identification from the school. It doesn't have anything to do with free and reduced one. It's a program outside of this that um, related to pandemic money, and it's going away. Um, are we talking about the homeless stuff? Promise I'm almost done. Um, the Kenny Vento. I think that's it. I think that's it. Any questions on any of that? And I kind of rattled a lot of information. There's a, there's a lot happening um, with the pandemic money um, affecting many, many programs now. And there's also, as you can see with the mid Kenny Vento, like they're trying to <laughs> put money out in different ways in order to support some of the families that will be having struggles um, as it as the money changes. So, oh, I did have one more thing. We are 16%, our funds are 16% expended and we're 14% through our school year. So we're doing okay. We're doing okay. 2% over. Yeah, we're 2% over, but we had all of those startups. So much for your mileage. Yeah, well, that's. I can that's what I, I have. I can find that. Does anybody have anything else? Um, I just wanted to mention how nice it is to, to have the principal from the high school, the principal from Grand Street, come here and tell us the good things that are happening. I mean, that's uplifting, and uh, should be to the public too. Thank you, and that's sincere, guys. I know. It really is. I appreciate it. Upcoming meeting is November 7th. Good luck to everybody who's running. Uh, seeing nothing else, motion to adjourn. No more. Thank you. All in favor? against us, Kevin. <laughs>
Thank you, everybody. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.